keep paddling, just keep paddling, just keep paddling. Welcome back to 340 Paddler, and today let's talk about what it's going to look like in 2023. And I'm going to be honest, it's going to look a lot like 2012, which unless you're dead last Johnny Ortiz, you have no idea what it looks like, which makes him the expert this year. Yes, go to Johnny Ortiz, ask him every question you have about handling temperature or really difficult low water year. He will be happy to answer it. Bring him coffee. He loves that too. So let's start with the temperatures. This year, it's going to be tough. Uh, right now, we're three weeks out. And looking at what it's looked like in Kansas City for the upcoming week, mid to upper 90s, we give some low 90s in there. Honestly, once you get over 95 or more, it really doesn't matter. We could easily see triple digits. 2012 was triple digits for four days. They had heat warnings saying, don't do anything outdoors. And so we raced down the Missouri River. It made a lot of sense at the time. And so... This may be something that we're looking forward to. For many people, even 90, 95 is going to be bad. But if we get to 97 and 100, it could be touchy. Cold water or cold weather is always an issue. Now, when? I just said that it's going to be hot. At night, especially if you're using a double blade, you're probably wet the entire time. And so when the air temperature starts dropping below 70 or so, especially if it does, you're going to start feeling cold. So bring a coat. Don't skip that. Just trust me. You do not want to be, you know, freezing on the river. And what makes it worse is sometimes you'll be freezing on land because the radiant heat from the water is keeping you warm. Now, again, that is unlikely to happen this year, but if we do get that cold, push your paddler back out on the water. Uh, sort of like a Viking funeral. They're going to be warmer out there than they are on shore. Yeah, okay, bad pun. I get it. Let's talk about storms. Storms are always an issue when it comes to the 340. There's always that threat of storms. If they come through, get off the water. That's pretty much it. Keep in mind that when storms come through, they're going to be, I mean, if you're from Missouri or Kansas, you're probably very used to this. If you're from Wisconsin, you're probably terrified of the fact that these storms come through and what they can look like. Ideally, you stay ahead of them. If you can't, find shelter uh, whenever possible. And if you're at a ramp and it looks like something might come in during the next half hour or hour, just sit at the ramp. Just relax for a little bit. Take a nap. You'll be all set to go when things clear. Fog is always an issue. I don't think there's ever been a year of the 340 where fog did not uh, come up as an issue somewhere along the course of the race. If it's high enough temperatures, then maybe it won't. But just a reminder, it can look like this when you're out there in the fog. And that's not the sun. That's a barge about to run me over. It was horrific. And you have no idea if I'm telling the truth or not at this point, because the more you look at it, the more it could be a barge light at night. But don't go out there. If you're out there at night, get or you're out there in the fog, get to shore as quickly as possible. This year, there should be plenty of sandbanks available. So, especially the second half of the race. So, if you come across a barge or fog or anything else, just get off the water, you'll be fine. Let's talk about that river level. This is the river level currently at Boonville as of July, whatever it is, 11th today. Now, why am I pointing this out? Well, below 10 feet is where we see sandbars. When we get to 7 feet... That means there's going to be a lot of sand. This could be an interesting race. Now, keep in mind, there's always enough water to race. There's always enough water in the, in the channel, so you'll be fine there. But what it means is you're not going to get quite the push that you might otherwise get. You might see things like this, which in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 21 would have been fantastic for certain times when we're coming up against night barges or whatever else and couldn't find any place. But this year, you're going to have lots of options if you want to stop at a sandbar. A couple of things you need to keep in mind. Number one, if you go to a sandbar, there's a decent chance there are flying carp in the area. So keep that in mind. Paddle up to the sandbar. If something bumps you, it's just going to happen. Number two, don't poop on a sandbar. Everyone's going to see it. So, you know, go up into the tree line or something. Don't go do that somewhere else. 
but on a sandbar, everyone's going to see what you're doing. Uh, number three, getting off the sandbar, always go back the way you came, even if it's slightly upriver. And by slightly upriver, I mean you're pointing sort of a little bit upriver until you know you're into deeper water. Why? Because you could end up in a situation where there's a lot of low sandbars still sitting under the water, maybe you know, a couple inches under the water, and your boat is just bottoming out more and more as you go. So take the same route out that you took in. Everything should be fine. Now, as a veteran of the 2020 race, a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, as we look at this picture, you will note that my uh, thighs are horribly burned. My hands are burned. My face is burned. I really was not enjoying myself as I slept at Glasgow that year. Don't sunburn make sure to spray yourself down bring your sunscreen with you spray yourself down every couple hours and you'll be fine number two if it's hot rest during the day paddle at night it'll be a lot easier it's a lot cooler and at the end of the day someone might even give you popsicles at the end you're going to get through this but it will be a race of attrition this will be a grit race this will not be about who can hit sub 40 because while some of the team boats might, I would argue that probably none of the solos as of today would do it. This year is all about just being able to grit it out. Whoever can stay on the water the longest, whoever can stay out there the most consistent in the most consistent manner will do very well. And to give you some numbers in 2020, or sorry, 2012, we had approximately 40% of the field DNF during the race. It was huge. A lot of people got to Glasgow and just called it. You know, they got to Lexington, Waverly, Miami, or Glasgow and called it at those points. If you get in a position where things are just falling off, the wheels are falling off, if nothing else, just push off and float. If you're already in the water and you're 20 miles from the next checkpoint, just relax. Do what you can to keep some forward momentum. But remember, surviving to paddle another day is always far better than DNFing during the race. We're all out there. We're all in this together. Let's just get to St. Charles in one piece. Keep your paddle in the water.